Boca Tov, shalom to everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, I see some of uh, brothers and sisters are on the other uh, link. So let me go over here and uh, try to share this over here. Uh, okay, I think brothers and sisters, I think you guys are on. Hey, shalom, shalom, Boca to everyone. Thank you for tuning in. If you can, if those who are in the chat, if you could, please uh, go over to the other link and share this link over there in that group. Uh, there are uh, several people over there on that link. Um, for some reason, I don't know what happened uh, with the stream, but that's neither here nor there. This morning, we have uh, someone who is... Um, rather controversial and you know guys I love to have uh, those who speak their mind and speak the truth no matter uh, how controversial it is I think that it's important for that the most high uh, have those um, that are out in the forefront that are speaking the truth and so right now we have here we have uh, Rabbi Weiss here with live with us here on YouTube um, Rabbi, you have anything you want to say before we get heads on, jump heads on into uh, the interview here? Well, I pray to the Almighty that uh, he should bestow upon me his truth and his wisdom, uh, that I may convey it uh, eloquently, clearly, and that uh, the words should go on the hearts of the people listening and that should go into the hearts that they should hear uh, the, the message. And with God's help, uh, we say in Arabic, inshallah, with, uh, that we should bring, uh, it should bring uh, to peace and to, uh, we should be glorifying the Almighty's name. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, Rabbi, let's, let's talk a little, let's, just before we get into this, um, you know, who, who who is Rabbi White, uh, Weiss? Like, what, what what did you? Where were you born? How did you start? You know, were you born, you know, into knowing uh, into Judaism, or were you just kind of like, uh, you know, kind of uh, later on found your way uh, into it? Or where we go, go ahead and share with the people uh, okay. uh, who you are. Uh, with the help of the Almighty, my name is uh, Rabbi Israel David Weiss. Uh, I was born in uh, New York in. Brooklyn, and um, my father uh, of blessed memory was from Hungary, and uh, um, near Taz, whatever, it's a city in Hungary, it's quite a large city, and um, he, when the Nazis came uh, into Hungary, uh, he escaped um, with some of his brothers, he escaped to um, Italy, from Italy ended up in the United States, um, but his parents unfortunately were killed in Auschwitz, uh, my father came uh, came from a very religious, God-fearing uh, family, uh, scholar, and um, he himself was uh, used to go to the great rabbi, uh, who's called the Munkacher Rebbe. Munkacher Rebbe. He was, <coughs> excuse me, one of the greatest fighters against Zionism. Um, uh, a brilliant scholar, a very holy man, very well known in the religious Orthodox. Uh, community, um, uh, Rabbi Chaim, um, a loser, uh, Shapiro, a blessed memory called the Minkach Rebbe, and um, he was the forefront of the fight against Zionism. My father used to go to him uh, as, you know, as a, um, an adherent to, to, to him, and as he went to also other great, great holy men. Uh, anyway, so my father got married in the United States, um, and uh, my mother was also born, uh, blessed memory was born in, also in Hungary, and, they, and I went to yeshivas, uh, you know, religious schools, and um, we grew up, I grew up in a, uh, in a the, in, it was basically an anti-Zionist community, and, uh, and thank God, and I married into an anti-Zionist uh, also family, and uh, I moved from where I originally lived to Williamsburg, Brooklyn. That's where my wife's family is from. Um, and there, uh, the, it, it is totally, strongly anti-Zionist, that community. It's the largest concentration of religious uh, families um, over there. It's right across from Manhattan. 
um, the, in fact, there's a bridge, it's called Williamsburg Bridge, because Manhattan is like an island, it, it is an island, and, it, and so the bridge, one of the bridges, this George Washington Bridge, Bro Brooklyn Bridge, and this Williamsburg Bridge, Williamsburg, which takes you right into the Jewish community, and it's, as I say, the largest uh, religious community there, and there's not one single Israeli flag, not one wow. single Israeli flag, because they're very religious. It's the most religious community you will find in the United States, and there is not. And and the it, it, the idea is that they, being that they're very religious, they stand in opposition to the existence of the Zionist uh, state. So basically, and so over there, I became a. Uh, um, I, I had married there, and um, I became more active in demonstrations because the chief rabbi of Palestine, of Jerusalem, um, his name was Rabbi Teitelbaum, a blessed memory, a very holy man, and he um, actually moved away from Jerusalem, moved to New York, and he urged and always advised pe the, uh, people to move out of, uh, of the occupied Palestine. They shouldn't be under the, you know, the control of the, of the Zionists. Um, and he himself did that. He lived in New York, and he has hundreds of thousands of followers, a very great man, and there's many, many computers around the world where you can go to Amsterdam, you can go to, uh, um, 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 th that is, you can go to um, uh, um, Antwerp, I'm sorry, Antwerp, Belgium, there's a very religious uh, community over there, and there's Satmar, and then you go to London, and you go to uh, Montreal, and you go any place with the very religious community, you will find his students and uh, his schools that basically from him, he was called the Satmar Rabbi, uh, because he came originally from Romania, from Satmar, also he was in, a, uh, in, in, constant, in the camps, and then he was, uh, and he, thank God, he came out alive, um, and, uh, and, and so he's, he was very strong in the issue that we have to go out in the streets and inform the world that the Zionists are uh, falsely using the name of Judaism and, we, and that we oppose Zionism its entirety. And God help, I will explain, I'll try to explain as best I could uh, the issue, what it's all about. <clears throat> but basically, the, uh, so him and, the, and invariably around the world, the very religious communities stands in opposition to the existence of the state. And of course, all the crimes that they do, that they perpetrate against the Palestinian people. So um, when I, I, although I, I went to demonstrations when I was in my youth, before I got married as a, even actually a young boy, I remember going, there were some demonstrations, but afterwards I became more involved and became more active and I started uh, talking to the press. And uh, that's sort of the history, you know, so this is many, many years, because thank God I'm, I'm married, uh, um, it's probably over, well, around 40 years or something. I think. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's very interesting. You know, we, we had a, a, a great conversation, uh, you know, over the phone, uh, just kind of talking about some things. You know, I, I, I shared with you some 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 things about the limbo Jews and, and you shared me some things about the Orthodox Jews and things like that. And just hearing you talk about how um, it was encouraged by the rabbis to move out of the land. And that's very interesting because um, there are many who, uh, and I, I mentioned to you about um, um, the, the Israelites in Demona, and I know you weren't from, too familiar about it, but um, there are many who believe in going into the land. And so, and, and it's not everybody, you know, of course you have pockets here and there of, of people, but that's very interesting to see that, that a, a, a group in within the Orthodox side, because many um, who are Orthodox, many do live in the land of Israel and things like that. But it's very interesting to hear someone, that's why I had to get you on to talk about this because it's, 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 it's almost like an oxymoron to find a Jewish rabbi who is against Zionism. I, I'm hoping that I don't even get flagged for saying Zionism, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, to, to see that, to talk about it. And we're going to get into a certain thing. We're going to get into mm -hmm. conversation about scripture and things like that, which brings the justification of why um, the protests or the speaking against the state um, is significant. Uh, and so when we do that, you, you, you have anything you, you want to share before we transition? Yeah. 
um, I would just like to point out that even though um, he urged and he was the chief rabbi, now there's a, the Israel has what they call a rabbinate and a chief rabbi that traipses around the world and speaks in the name of supposedly the Jewish people, but we look at this as a farce, it's a, they're masquerading, and in order that to legitimize their state, they keep on looking at angles, they use the Star of David, the symbols, the name Israel itself is Jacob in the Torah, and uh, and it's, it's, it's they're using religious uh, uh, symbols and uh, issues in order to legitimize a, a purely materialistic uh, um, a, a state uh, uh, that has nothing to do with God, with religion. It's a, it's a totally uh, like I, I would say, you know, what we say, like a selfish political. Uh, creation that they're trying to do, and yet they need to get the backing and the support uh, from the world, from the non-religious, from the non-Jewish, uh, from the Christians and from the, uh, um, and, and from the Jewish people, who, wherever they can get it. So therefore, they use this facade of religion, and they made a rabbinate and a, and a chief rabbi, and whenever they want to destroy um, the homes of Palestinians or whatever, they'll have the rabbi like write a check. In other words, they'll sign their names on a document because, like, say, you're not allowed to cut any fruit trees. It's against the Jewish law. It's very, and they'll so they'll, but they can go and they'll cut off, cut off all the olive um, uh, trees, you know, that's that's so precious to the uh, to the uh, to the pa Palestinian people. But the, but but although, so I would just want to say that so, the, so that's their rabbinate, which is a farce. But there is a rabbinate, and there was a rabbinate that was existing and it was always it was for, for hundreds and hundreds of years there were Jewish community uh, um, uh, that Jewish community was much smaller than the Muslim community but there was a solid Jewish community a God-fearing very God-fearing community for hundreds of years living in Palestine and um, uh, and, and so they had the, the rabbis to represent them, and they had a chief rabbi. And um, there was one first, there was Rabbi Zonenfeld, um, who in the 1920s, you see Zionism started come on, uh, started their movement sort of in the 1890s, 18, and they came up and they started coming up to, uh, to, to, to the Holy Land, to Palestine in that time. And they started settling there. And when they did, so the chief rabbi of the, of the religious community, which was basically the whole community, because there was no such thing almost as a non-religious Jew at that time. Uh, his name was Rabbi Zonenfeld of blessed memory. And he met with the king of Transjordan. And he put out letters. We are now on site, nkusa.org. You can see we have letters. In, in, they were put in the, in the advertisements in the um, Arabic uh, speaking newspapers where, where they declared that we have no want and no, we're not, uh, we have no goal, we have no want, we're not interested, in, of course, God forbid, to take any land from the Palestinian people or from that. This is a picture of Rabbi Zonfield. Wait, 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 you, you, so you're telling me, Rabbi, that Rabbi Zonfield literally said that we have no authority to take the land and we, and we're, we're building up to 1948 here during the, the Balfour right, Declaration. Right, yes, yeah. Yes. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Rabbi. Right. Now, and uh, uh, then afterwards, uh, if you ask him, I'm telling you that, I'll tell you, this is the picture of a meeting. This was, rab after he passed away, that Rabbi Zonenfeld, there was the next chief rabbi of the religious community. Like I said, I'm, I'm, we're not, because people hear chief rabbi, chief, they think of the Zionist rabbinate. We have nothing to do with that. We're talking about the rabbinate that exists till today that represents the religious community that is anti-Zionist. Uh, the next one after was Rabbi Dushinsky of blessed memory. Now this Rabbi Dushinsky um, actually in 1947, that's when did the United Nations ratify the state? 1948. So a year prior to that, Rabbi Dushinsky, now this is taken out of the documents of the United Nations and, and I'm qu quoting, this is the same picture in small, this is Rabbi Dushinsky and he said, and I'm quoting one of the, sentences there. We furthermore wish to express our definite opposition to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. Now this is a very religious rabbi and he's representing the core, the, 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 uh, the essence of the whole communities that were there for hundreds of years and he says telling the United Nations that without any um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 
type of causes or anything. He's saying clearly, we furthermore wish to express our definite opposition to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. So, so, he, so he's like, at he's there at the United Nations, right? Basically, almost in a protest exactly. in stating. In well, stating the United Nations, understandably, because the United Nations is, was in New York, and so forth, well, well, and Geneva they have their other, um, but the, but but he, it was the delegation that came up to Jerusalem to Al Quds at the time, and they and they went and they pleaded with them that the, you see that there is a group of people, the Zionists, and they're they're uh, portraying themselves as representatives of the communities when it's totally false. They have no right to speak in our name. They're powerful because they had the backing. They came from Europe and they were well connected with the governments in Britain and um, you know throughout Europe and the v, in Vienna and so forth. But he said they have. What is that with with standing here with with Jews that are living here? Who are these people? Uh, the Zionists. Uh, the Zionists were uh, were mostly total uh, heretics. They 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 despised their religion. They went away from the religion. They didn't keep the Ten Commandments, and they decided to make a, a, um, a type of Erzatz Judaism, another thing, um, and that they should have their homeland. They should have their own sovereignty, and um, and that they should be able to do what they want. And that what they what according to their whims, whatever they like. So, but if you can look at the picture of um, this is David Ben Gurion, uh, the famous of the father, one of the uh, you know fathers of Zion, the first prime minister of the state, uh, in reading the Declaration of in, of Independence in 1948 in Independence Hall. Now, if you look, um, you can people can Google it, and you'll see that none of them. You don't see a covered head. They're all going with their bare heads whenever a Jewish person is required to cover that. Now, imagine, imagine if you would go and uh, see a Muslim leader, uh, one of the Ayatollahs or a sheikh or an imam. I mean, and you're going to see him, uh, you know, totally without a beard, without all the, you know, whatever. You'll go to the Pope, won't dress as a, a, as a, as a Christian. I mean... We have the Jewish people, everyone, all the rabbis, look at the pictures, all the rabbis with beards, with uh, covering the head because it's required to choke because we cover our head to remember that we have God above us. Right. In fact, we call it a yarmulke. We wear a covering of our head all the time and the mm -hmm. hats we go and are uh, out or whatever. But in the home, we wear a yarmulke. That means Yore Malko. We fear God. Yarmulke mm -hmm. means Yore Malko. Fearing Malko means the king. So, so this, so the farce and the hypocrisy of it all is they're speaking and they're making a state, supposedly a Jewish state, and where do they have any uh, connection to Judaism? The only connection is that they're fighting it. <laughs> I mean, they have nothing with it. So, but, the, but I'm getting off on a tangent, so I just wanted to say. No, you, you're fine. You're fine, Rabbi. Keep. Go ahead. You yeah. can talk. So you the rabbi the at the time, this um, rabbi who, um, uh, if the so Rabbi um, Zonenfeld and Rabbi Dashinsky passed away. There was one other. Then there was Rabbi Teitelbaum. Um, now, they always took rabbis. They looked around the world to find the most, you know, saintly and big scholar to, be, to, to have that lofty position of chief rabbi of, of, of Jerusalem, Palestine, because that's the, like the beauty of, you know, the, uh, how would you say, the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the, the 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 beauty of the of the of, of Judaism, you know, that's the center of something, the heart of Judaism, let's say. Mm -hmm. So they always they found so um the Shinsky was from Hungary, um, and they they took him up from there to become their chief rabbi. Rabbis uh, uh and Rabbi Teitelbaum, who was the one who was the previous, what was after Rabbi Dushinsky, he came from Romania, actually, Satmar actually. Um and uh, and this was after the Second World War, they took him up to be the chief rabbi. Now, eventually he moved out of there and he was urging his students to move away from there, as I've said. He moved to New York, but still in all, that community still existed, a very large community. So when you'll see after Rabbi Teitelbaum, for instance, I'll tell you just picture, if he passed away, the, ne there was a, the next chief rabbi was Rabbi Weiss, not a relative of mine, <laughs> uh, and, and he became chief rabbi in uh, um, in uh, two o two in twenty o two in Misparam. And you can see the pictures. These are you can see literally in the street alone. There was over ten thousand people in this Kikar Shabbos. They have hundreds of thousands of people. They're still living there. I mean, there are many people who left when they can. But it's not easy to leave a country when you don't know speak another language and, you know, immigration rules. That said, the Jews around the world 
let's say, for instance, this is a picture of, uh, that we have. This is in front of the White House when Netanyahu came to visit. Um, and this is just one picture, and you can see tens of thousands. This is in front of what? So you have the very large communities that are still living in Palestine. They never gave up their their lives and lives in Palestine. They live there. They live in Jerusalem, and they're anti-Zionist to the core. They 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 stand in opposition to its existence. They never accepted the uh, the existence of the state. This was from an. They, this was from a, an, an encroached uh, a group of people called Zionists. They, they're rebels against God. We we look at them as they, they are heretics. We look at them as that, and we and so we have nothing to do with them, and we don't go voting in their elections. We 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 are invisibles. We don't believe in them. In fact, when we they get arrested, a lot of my colleagues constantly because we we refuse to serve in the IDF. There's mandatory service in the IDF in the Israeli Defense Force, and our boys and girls refuse to serve there. There's no way they're going to give their lives rather than serve. They get arrested, they get beaten, they get, um, uh, and and we here's a picture, for instance, of a girl. This is men, men, it's ongoing, this. They get arrested, we make demonstrations, they eventually have to release them. But these are, let's say, a picture behind bars. They put on, to demean them, they put on Israeli uh, uniforms, on behind and, and, so, and so these, 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 they are just crying as you see. Right, they are anti-Zionist, and they right. are they are anti against the state of Israel. So just just to be clear, we have people constantly coming in. We have over fifty people in right, right now, and more and more are coming in. To and and many of them who are just not coming on probably don't understand what's going on or whatever. Right. But to be clear, just to state this, just to be clear, you Rabbi Weiss, you are not for. Zionism, and you're not for the 1948 Balfour Declaration and establishment of what we know as the state of Israel. You came up and you have a group or a community of people that are anti Zionist and anti state of Israel. Is that correct? That is partly correct. Okay. We, not, I don't have a community. The core okay. of Jewish religion. Okay. It's antithetical, it's contradictory to Zionism. And with God's help, I'll explain that. Okay. And therefore, okay. And therefore, as I keep on showing, there is the, the, the chief rabbi of the Jewish community from Palestine pleaded with the United Nations that we refute, we furthermore wish to express our definite opposition to a, uh, to a, a, a Jewish state, a so called Jewish state. So that's. Um, bear with me. I just, I'm trying some things just went on there. Okay, so we have um, a so, certain this is something that's uh, a, a given in the very religious communities around the world, not a community again. It's around the world, there's, a, a, there's a Jewish communities. Invariably, the more the religious, whether it is in Canada, whether it is in, uh, in, in England, whether it is in uh, Argentina, wherever there is the very religious communities, they stand in total opposition to the existence of the state of Israel. I'm just saying here, if somebody from the United States, the largest community is right across from Manhattan, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, there's not one single Israeli flag, and we're constantly demonstrating. Just yesterday, we've been joining with the Palestinian demonstration in Manhattan. I just came back uh, actually from Washington, D.C. Um, um, uh, yeah, Robert, let me, let me, let me ask you a question. I wanna ask a, qu a question. Um, yeah. What, it, what is the significance? It seems as though um, there is this push to um, yeah. wave the Israeli flag. Like what's what's the and, and I know you said you, in your in, in the in the Orthodox in community in Manhattan, there's not yeah. one Israeli flag, right. not right. one yeah. zero. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. So so what is the, what is the push? It seems to or who's who you think is pushing this? pro-Israeli flag, especially here in America, because it's 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 the, the consensus that, well, you know, if you support Israel, you know, you'll be blessed. It's our duty, especially most in the Christian circles, it is our duty to do this. And so everybody is waving these Israeli flags um, as though that they're going to be blessed by so showing their support for 1948. What is your take on that? Um well, this is the works of the Satan, simply. It sounds very radical, but these, again, these are people, we have to reiterate, these are people who are 
mostly totally non they're not religious i mean that's blatantly obvious to anybody who looks what the state is um that it's everything's flowing on the sabbath we're not allowed to drive in cars you're not allowed to um, uh, do work anything and just go there you can see uh what's happening over there that this everything is going normally like the regular weekday that they drive in cars and they do business, they do and everything. See, this is a, a, a flagrant uh, uh, breach of the, of the Ten Commandments that one that, it's, uh, the, uh, that it, the Sabbath is a rest day that we're not allowed to do that. So just to show you, so these are, this is clearly not a Jewish state. I really should explain. We keep on talking around it. Let me explain. Go ahead, Rabbi. <laughs> yeah. Zionism is a movement that started uh, a little over 100 years ago. Judaism is a religion of 3,000 years. We, we made our covenant with God. Most Rabbeinu Moses went up to God and, and took the Torah uh, in uh, around 3,000 years ago on Mount Sinai. And the Jewish people, there was over a million Jews, Jewish people who stood there at that time, who was standing on Mount Sinai and heard how God spoke to them. It wasn't like he took it individually. It was all the people were there. It was done in public, it was uh, uh, this this uh, that he brought down the Torah, and they heard God speaking to them. It's over a million people. That's six hundred thousand men from the age of twenty to sixty, and their families, children, wives, and for older and younger uh, people. So, I mean, you're talking about over a million people. And this was passed down. There was never a gap in our history. It was passed down from generation to generation. We're a people of the book. It was called up. Uh, yes, we refer to as the people of the book, and. Um, that means, first of all, we have the Torah, but it's been it's constantly the rabbis have been writing. There's never been a gap. Everybody writes the history and so forth and the Torah that, that they study. And so you, nobody refuted this truth that was handed down from all the generations. Uh, that is what Judaism is. Zionism is a political movement that started in Europe from basically athe Theodor Herzl a basic atheist and um, uh, uh, who detested religion. And I'll just, uh, I'll, uh, with God's help, I'll show you a few statements of his, you'll see. But um, so they made this new movement. Now, it's now let us understand, what is this movement? To have a national, to have a, uh, uh, their own home, a uh, national state, yeah? A nationalism, their own. Now, Judaism uh, dictates to us that we were to go into the Holy Land and um, which you were speaking about, we'll see uh, there's many verses about that God required of the Jewish people to go up to the Holy Land. And because that's like God's garden, metaphorically speaking, and we were to serve God over there and build a temple. Uh, but the Torah, if anybody looks in the five books of Moses that Moses took, that it constantly commands us that we have to be on a very high, uh, an elevated level of holiness in order to go there, because it's like God's garden. So we have to be on a special holiness. Now, the Jews went in, first there was some who were reluctant to go in, as uh, they were called the Erev Rab, they didn't want to go in, and the Jews were punished because of that. They did be 40 years, they went in the, in the in the wilderness, as you know, the Midbar it was called, because as a punishment, because they didn't go. But when they did go up, and so the prophets spoke to them all the time, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and all the many prophets from going from beginning. To, and they kept on urging them and, and advising them to be on this high level of holiness. If not, <clears throat> they warned them that, as it says in the Torah, that they will be, re they will be um, uh, sent into exile. They will be thrown out of the land. And that is what eventually happened. And if like a period of a thousand years, that is 2,000 years ago, it was the destruction of the temple, and the Jews were dispersed around the world. That King Solomon built the temple. There were two temples they, they returned after 70 years. It was the second temple. Both were destroyed uh, by the Romans, by the Greeks, Greeks, and the Jews were dispersed throughout the world. Now, when we were dispersed, we were put on the three oaths by God that we were told that the reason we were um, we were spread out throughout the world and that we we lost to the Greeks and to the Romans is not because we were uh, lacking in physical strength or lacking in the army. It was a decree of God. We were warned by the prophets that this is exactly what will happen. It's when, when God wanted to assist us, God wanted that we should be successful. So Joshua went into the Holy Land and they walked around the walls of Jericho and they sunk in. 
miraculously, we, we won wars through miracles. It was, it was not necessary for the power of a human being. And we saw, and you look again, if somebody studies <coughs> the prophets, you'll see that, um, that it was a lot of times pure miracles that they were, how God just simply fought for them. But when the time came that we were not on that high level that was required, and we were sent into exile, <coughs> excuse me, so the so then the, the, all the king's horses and all the king's men didn't help. It didn't help the power of the Jewish army or so because it was a godly decree that we had to be dispersed. And we say every Jew says in our prayers, uh, "You see us, yeah." Every in our in our prayers it says clearly, <laughs> because of our sins. You, you, we were sent into exile. We say that in our prayers. In other words, when we pray to God, can we say, because of our sins, we were dispersed amongst the nations. We were sent out of the Holy Land as a nation. Once we were sent out with the destruction of the temple, God put us on the three oaths. One, that we should not attempt to return en masse to the Holy Land as a, you know, as a nation and then return en masse. Secondly, we are not to rebel against any nation. We have to be loyal citizens in every country we reside. And thirdly, we should not make any attempt to end exile. So therefore, this was 2,000 years ago. From then till today, we went through the Inquisition in Spain. Yeah, we went through the uh, uh, the Crusades. Jews were murdered. The, the Jewish blood, unfortunately, flowed like like rivers of war, yeah, and and yet still in all, our rabbis kept on saying there were Jewish people who had the capability of buying a piece of land, and always the rabbi said, no, it's forbidden. The Almighty sent us into exile. He loves us. He protects us. He doesn't. It's forbidden for us to go and create our own sovereignty. Even one inch of a Jewish sovereignty is expressly forbidden. Therefore, although we suffered so much. We never, for the last 2,000 years, we never made an attempt to make our own homeland. And it's because it's forbidden. Now, Zionism came, Theodor Herzl and his cohorts and his, all these guys who detested religion, they scoffed at the religion, they, they, and they didn't hold the religion, and they didn't care what it says in the Torah because it meant nothing to them. They decided they want a national, they want respect. They felt that they were not being respected properly, people looking down at that you know, old time Jew. And therefore they decided they're going to make their homeland. They're going to make a country and that it's, and that's going to be proud. They're going to have an Olympic team and all the strappings of, of a nation. And therefore they decided to make a state, ignoring these three oaths of God. Now, being that they decided to go to Palestine, if anybody knows, I'm sure you know, of course, the history, but I don't know if everybody knows. They sat in meetings and they thought, first, we'll go to Uganda, we'll go to Patagonia. Why? Because it's lush land, productive. Uh, they'll be able, to, in those days, you, the, 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 you looked uh, basically how the land was. It wasn't computerized yet. So you looked at your, uh, the profits were made and the, uh, you were able to be successful at a, if you had a very rich land uh, you know, that could produce fruits and vegetables and so forth. So they decided to go to Uganda, Patagonia, many different areas. But some of their advisors said to them, look, to make a country, you need a massive amount of backing and support. So the, 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 the way you'll be successful is if you go to Palestine, because in Palestine, you'll be able to wave the Bible and say, I have a deed to the land, and you'll be able to convince the Christians to back you, give you massive amount of support. You'll get the Jews who don't, who are unfortunately ignorant of their Torah, and they're going to also support you. And you can speak about idealism. Oh, we were sent into exile, and every Jew prays and yearns to return to the Holy Land. And you'll tell them, oh, we are to be called, they call it Eschalta de Geula. They keep on saying the beginning of redemption. Uh, they, oh, if you'll see advertisements, which everybody hears in the United States. They have music going on um, um, radio programs and um, all over, that, that, like some heartful music that, that makes, you you know, that makes a person uh, emotions play. And they say, 2,000 years we were in exile, and now we are returning to the land that God gave us. These, these <laughs> criminals, these, uh, these heretics, how dare they? God says that we are forbidden to go and create our own sovereignty. It's a direct rebellion against God. It's an oath that God put us on the oath. When are we going to return? When the Almighty, with his compassion, feels that it is the time has come 
then with, there will not be wars. The Messiah will come and all the j- nations will join hands. It says, all the nations will come and join together without wars. They will come and they will come together and to serve God. And, 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 and so not that everybody will become Jewish, but they will all serve God in harmony. So this concept that these guys come with guns, with their Uzis, with their with their uh, all that the, the horrific uh, um, um, weapons, and they come and they and and they try to forcibly take that the land, and they claim they're doing it in the name of God. That 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 is uh, uh, that is repulsive. It is it, it and it is unacceptable, and it's against the Torah. And our rabbis all spoke out against this. Now, not only is it forbidden. As I said, it, even if the land would have been a desolate land, uninhabited, we would not accept the Jewish state. There's no such thing. It's unacceptable. It's a rebellion, a direct rebellion against everything that we've been living for 2,000 years and suffering to see, serve God. And, you know, even though we were, uh, you know, uh, we, we were harassed and oppressed, but we never rebelled against the God's command and tried to create a Jewish sovereignty. Uh, so it would be forbidden even in uninhabited land. But being that they went to Palestine, which they felt the, the place for them to go, they did that by encroaching, by going and 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 uh, invading and uh, you know coming and in, into the homes of the Palestinian people, which the majority community was Muslim and a secondly the large community was the Christians and the third community there was the Jewish community. This was the beautiful fabric over there. Now, even the Jewish community were opposed to them, dead set against them. We put out books about that. There's many, of course, in Hebrew writing, but even in English, we put out a book called The Rabbis Speak Out, a 130-year record of religious Jewish opposition to Zionism. We compiled here, I mean, there's literally in those that period, there's tens and tens of thousands of rabbis from around the world. But we put in here the major... Rabbis, who anybody who knows their Judaism knows these rabbis, and we have, let's say, a quote from the one one of the great codifiers of laws from Lithuania. From he 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 was from 1839 to 1933 before the state, but after Zionism started. And and this is Rabbi Yisroel Meir, a cone of blessed memory, who, he, the author of Chavetz Chaim of Mishnah Brura. Any he's one of the great. Everybody uses him for the laws of Judaism. And he wrote, I'm just quoting one quote from him. He said, "The Zionists are dead limbs of our people, which causes the entire body to rot." In other words, they the people are dead limbs already. These are not. They're not following the religion, and they're causing the entire body to run. This is just an example. And then we have the chief rabbis of Palestine. This was the Satma Rebbe of, 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 of Palestine, uh, who I mentioned earlier. And so you, it's like encompasses rabbis from around the world, from the uh, Middle East, from um, from Africa, from the United States, you know, from all the, from wherever, the, Europe, or wherever there was uh, 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 rabbis who were worth the <laughs> anything, they stood in opposition to this Zionist uh, movement. Um, and the Zionist movement, I'll just give you a, a quote from Theodor Herzl, who was the father of Zionism, and Jabotinsky. These are two, let's say, fathers of Zionism. Theodor Herzl wrote in his diary, and this is quoting him. Oh, this book, by the way, I didn't mention what this is, called Traditional Torah Opposition to Zionism, historical documents. We have documents of the rabbis who were in opposition to Zionism, many documents. And then we have um, in some of these documents, these are from the Zionists, what they said, some of the pearls of, 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 of quotes of, from the Zionists. So Theodor Herzl wrote in his diary, and I'm quoting him, the way to solve the problem of anti-Semitism is to speak to the head priest of Vienna. He, was, he lived in Vienna. He said, the way to solve the problem of anti-Semitism is to speak to the head priest of Vienna to get an appointment with the Pope to make a mass conversion of all the Jews of Austria to Catholicism. Imagine, this is his solution. <laughs> what we've given our lives so, for. So, so, hold on. So, Rabbi, he, he's, he's saying <laughs> the best solution is to convert to Catholicism. Exactly. In other words, we, get, we were burnt at the stake in 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 uh, in the in the in Spain and and so on and still today you can see the 
uh, the plaques and the memories of this is a fact. You know, there was the Inquisition that people were murdered and, 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 and tortured that they should give up their religion. And he's coming now with this brilliant solution that we, there should be a mass conversion of all the Jews of Wall Street to the house. It should be done on a Sunday in the middle of the day with music <laughs> And pride publicly. We are the last generation that held on to the faith of our forefathers. The conversion will be in St. Stephen's Cathedral. Just like he just spoke it out, not just one sentence, you know. He has his whole plan. Imagine the, the audacity. That, so this is the father of Zionism, Theodor Herzl. Um, here, when, when they made the state, he has his picture on the wall. He's the father of the Zionism. This is his picture. Of course, his head is bare. He, he detested the religion. And I'll just give one more pearl <laughs> from the from the, uh, the, the Begin who was a prime minister, his mentor. He was this was the Haganah, and there was these you know these terrorist groups, and there was the Rechi, and the, and so the Stern gang. The, the ones who were more like the terrorists were the ones from the revisionist uh, founder of revisionist Zionism, um, Vladimir Zabatinsky. And I'm going to quote him. This is from Haaretz magazine, Haaretz uh, newspaper, October. 22nd, 1919, right? That's way before the state, 1919, okay? And this is what he writes, in a, unabashedly, in a newspaper article. It's called, it's called from outside the encampment in a Earth's newspaper, quoting, in the national home, we will announce, because they had a plan to create a state. So he said, in the national home, we will announce that those Jews who have on themselves the rust of exile, and they refuse to shave off their beards and, and earlocks, their payas, this is what I have, the side curls, will be second-class citizens and will not have the right to vote. Uh, if you, we refuse to shave off our beards and pay us our Jewish symbols, then we will be second-class citizens. In Adam. Now, if I wouldn't have said his name, you would say this is Germany. These are the Nazis in the 1930s. If you would, I would just quote that, right? You would never right. imagine that that's the head of Zionism. This is the father and the face of Zionism, just to get an idea of the hypocrisy and the falsehood. So they're making a Jewish state, right? It's a cocoa Jewish state. They use King David, who was God-fearing, who, who, and, and they use the star of David, the name Israel, who was Jacob in the Bible, of course. Right. And so, so, so of course, it's you can see the um, the the contradiction, the clear contradiction between Judaism, which is subservience to God. That's what it was about. That we accepted, we made a covenant with God at Mount Sinai to be subservient to Him, uh, all the laws of the Torah and Zionism, which is the which is the transformation from this subservience to God to a base material nationalism to have a piece of land void of God as its uh, essence, as its core. So they may use, as in order to show that they're a country, that they're uh, uh, a great country, they, they claim that they allow different religions and that they support it. Of course, it's a, lot, it's a farce because I will show you what they do with the, so, how they so, treat. So, 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 Rabbi, so Rabbi, let me ask you this question. So what, what you're essentially saying is, is that the fight is not about or against the religion but the fight should be more so against the people who took the land of Israel in the name of religion, trying to use the Bible, trying to use the prophets and trying to use this thing, the, the flag and all this other stuff. When really it has nothing to do with the religion. It has nothing. None of them believe in God or anything. They just straight. It's all about greed and lining their pockets and filling their pockets. And they'll and basically they'll crap on Jewish people. They'll crap on uh, uh, Palestinians. They'll crap crap on Israelites. They'll crap on anybody that stands in their way or come against them. Is that what you're essentially saying? Exactly. Although we say we try to say that we don't. We're not talking about um, how our uh, fight should be. Our fight is by trying to to uh, to convince. The heads of the you know, the uh, the countries around the world, the, the leaders of the countries around the world, that they should cease and desist and support 
of this occupation and they should uh, they should open their hearts and support and help the Palestinian people and we should return to what it was before Zionism came, that we live together in harmony, Arabs and Muslims and Jews, you know, we live together. So that's what we have to do. Because so the word fight, I just want to clarify, I'm sure I can okay. talk to, that we're not talking about violence. Right, we're right. About simply to understand what the conflict is all about, exactly like you said so beautifully, that it's not, it's not only, uh, it's not, it's not about the religion. It's not a conflict of religion. Let's say between Muslims and Jews. It, it, it because um, in first of all history attests that we lived together for hundreds and hundreds of years. Here, like I show pictures, you know, we lived together, the Arab and Jew in, in in Palestine and throughout the Arab and Muslim world. It's had nothing to do with that. They want to portray it. Zionism wants to claim it's a religious conflict, but it's totally not what that. It's a conflict with Zionism, a purely political movement, an ersatz Judaism. So when people uh, complain, they should just have to, they should always be careful. It's not called the Jews or the Jewish state, which the Zionists want you to call it. So then they can attack you as being anti-Semitic. Uh, wait, 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 hold on, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Rabbi. Yeah. I need you, that was very important what you just said. Can you please back up just a little bit about the anti-Semitism and why they established the way they did. So if anybody was to speak out, because I was even talking to Rabbi Harry Rosenberg about this, and he was even saying that many of them, if you speak out against um, the, the Zionists in the state of Israel, even if you're Jewish, they almost pretty much will put you in the anti-Semitism category as well. Right. That's why. I mean, that's what they keep on fighting around here in the um, in the United States and in Europe. That it's uh, it's called that that it should be referred to as a Jewish state, and you should not differentiate between Jewish and Zionist. So if you say anti-Zionist, it automatically means anti-Jewish, and you are an anti-Semite. Now that is the that is part of the corruption of their their uh, maneuvering of their. Uh, uh, you know, uh, attempts to stifle the voice of godliness, the voice of righteousness, the voice of human rights, um, uh, 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 by 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 having a person being labeled and tainted and stained as an anti-Semite because they're using the religion, the godliness, they're using God's religion as a hammer to be able to uh, stifle and intimidate other people who want to speak up against the crimes that they're doing. And they have no connection with it. They simply hijacked and stole the name Israel. They've hijacked our name and our symbols and, uh, and our respect, our everything that we are, our essence. And with that, they're using it to, to uh, forcefully create uh, and solidify their occupation. It's unacceptable, and we've been standing up against this from day one, our rabbis, and they've been assassinated. Our rabbis have been murdered. Um, we have, again, you could go to our site, and, um, sorry, there's a phone here. We hey, Rabbi, let me, let, let yeah. me, before, before you go there, let me ask you a question. I want to I ask you a question about scripture here. Um, Isaiah chapter 2, 1 through 5. In, when 1948 took place, was that scripture of the prophet fulfilled? None of the, 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 these uh, um, prophecies about returning, about God will take us out of exile and we will return and go up and serve God. <clears throat> I could keep on trying to clarify this issue that the, the, when this will happen, there's in the Rambam, the, uh, one of the codifiers of Jewish laws, Maimonides, very famous Maimonides. Um, 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 people know there's a Maimonides hospital and so forth, right? Because it's mm -hmm. named after him. He was our famous, he wrote, the, uh, he was also a codifier, he put together con concise the laws of Judaism. And he speaks about the time of when uh, the end of, uh, this exile, when the, the Messiah will come, and um, all these things that will happen, he explains how it will happen, and it will be a time, a miraculous period, and as I say, basically, we will know that the time has come, the time has arrived, when there will be um, a spirit of repentance, when the Jewish people <coughs> and the, the, will repent and return to the Torah properly, and there will be a godliness. The whole world will go up and serve God in harmony. So he speaks about this time. And 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 it says that the Messiah will have to bring signs and everything, that the, Elijah the prophet will come three days before he comes, and there will be a blowing of a big of a horn. Um, so 
this we will know when he comes. This by taking a gun and saying, "Give me back the land." We're bringing in the Messiah. That's re that's that's detestable, repulsive. There's the words for, uh, to say that what they're doing is, and and we see who's doing it. These guys are wow. godly. These are not rabbis. These are not God fearing people. Yes, they try to incorporate the religion when they made their state. So they put on this pious facade, you know, this, and and they and they claim, oh, this is godliness, and they made a rabbinate, and they take some uh, uh, rotten apples. Um, maybe they're knowledgeable. You can be, you can be, you can be a big scholar and 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 be a murderer. That doesn't change the issue. And they and they took the they, and they took uh, some very knowledgeable uh, uh, scholars who are rotten. Who, who and and they made them and they were willing to sell, were ready to sell their soul, and they were ready to sell their soul for a, you know for a few dollars and, and respect that they were given, and they made them chief rabbis and they traipsed around the world. No, these rabbis um, uh, were a lot of them were students of great rabbis. I mean, they studied somewhere and they studied, and their rabbis were adamantly opposed to them. And they ostracized them. They had nothing to do with them afterwards. These are they have thousands and thousands of students. You always find some ways, unfortunately, somebody you know who who strays from the path. And these ones who are straight from the path, the Zionists grab them. They give them a lot of money. They give them their respect, and they give them they call them a cheap rabbi and this and that. But the whole rabbinate is a farce because it's a re wow. direct rebellion against God. And again. As I say, I'm not speaking like my opinion here. We're talking about communities that are uh, respectful, the distinguished communities. Come to New York, go to uh, go to Jerusalem, Meir the, the, the There's, like I say, hundreds of thousands of people are live in those areas, and they're anti-Zionist. They have flags on the walls, Palestinian flags painted on the walls. There, they demonstrate constantly. Um, we have. Um, we, I could show you pictures. It's really interesting to see. Um, here you have, this is marches in Jerusalem. Uh, uh, Stop Zionist terrorist massacre in Gaza. These are the streets of Jerusalem where they march constantly. Uh, and But when they demonstrate, it's, when they're demonstrating over there, I just want to show you what they do. The, the Zionists, these are like a wall. This is they're so cute. You have a boy up top there and you have the Palestinian flag. A picture of the street in Jerusalem, but you see the military is constantly brutally beating out people and assassinating them. Here, old rabbis, they have no respect. They trample them with their horses. They, they, they. Here, you see them spraying them with this chemical that destroys the poor people. They spray them with stink. It's called stink water or something. It's chemicals that destroy the clothes. They, yeah, they, 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 they're, they're even, they're even uh, persecuting, or shall I say, or beating and. And treating uh, better Israel with the Ethiopian Jews, they're treating them uh, horrible as well uh, in right. Israel. But here you see pictures of children, old men, children. They have nothing. They that no compunctions, no problem with brutally beating and 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 uh, you know and and uh, maiming and arresting and uh, murdering our rabbis. And, and here, look at these pictures. You can go to our site. You know, so this is something that's ongoing. Uh, there's yeah. thousands and thousands of children, and it's ongoing daily. It's I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking yeah. here, Rabbi. Rabbi, I want to ask questions again, also as well with the prophets. I'm looking here at Ezekiel uh, 39 and verse 28, and it's talking about when the when Israel is gathered from the four corners of the earth. When all when those who are scattered, there'll be peace. There'll be no more war. So, right. how can the, go, go ahead? You want to elaborate on that particular passage of the prophet? Yeah. Well, I keep on saying. Um, uh, it, it's brought down, it says, I'm going to just add to this. Um, th then we will know that like you're writing over there, they will climb, I will bring back my people from the, and, and the, uh, um, then they will know that I am God and so forth. It says that th there's more to that. It says that the uh, all the nations will make one, uh, how would you say, a good, uh, like a, gr a gr 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 um, group together. Lassos to do the will of God, and they will all go up and they will serve God. The God will build a temple, we, we believe, in the future, where it will be the will of humanity. It will be created by God himself. It's a spiritual concept. It says God himself will create the third temple. That right. will be. So whenever a threat, you see, in our history, we lived in the Muslim countries. And by the way, we are always, as the Torah requires of us, we have to show gratitude 
for people who did uh, uh, good for the uh, for the Jewish people. That says in the Torah many times. The Muslim and Arab countries throughout our history, when we were being persecuted in Europe, in 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 the like in, you know by unfortunately by the Christian uh, they, they, like I said they tried to convert them they by they burnt them at the stake in the inquisitions the, the Muslim the Muslim countries opened their doors and embraced us and we flourished in every single Muslim country if you have Egypt in in um, Iraq in Iran in in um, um, Tunisia in Morocco and in uh, in Turkey wherever you'd like you find the old cemeteries you find that we had our, you can see the history and till today and we have Jews flourished our greatest rabbis came from there because they opened their doors and embraced us so we uh, we we have to show gratitude to that in other words they were clearly muslim they were they were very strong, you know, practice of, of, of the Islamic religion, right? And we were practicing um, um, our religion very religiously, very, the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, the uh, Jewish communities. Yet we were able to coexist. There was no human rights. There was no United Nations. They took us in and we flourished. And they helped us, and they respected us, and protected us. And we flourished in all these lands. Now they have the audacity, the Zionists, to claim that you know that it's a religious conflict and the Muslims hate the Jews. And Palestine was the same issue. We lived together in the same courtyards. We babysat each other's children. But there was no human rights groups. It was not never a necessity of that. This is the story of how we live together and um and 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 flourished in these Muslim lands. And this is uh so, so this is that will be in the future. You understand in the future will be more than that. There will be uh, a spirit of God where all the nations together will live together in peace but why didn't they the the muslims at that time uh, their learned scholars the imams and the sheikhs and i told us why weren't they uh, afraid of what, that the jewish people are out here to uh, you know to take over the land or something like that or do harm to them because they knew that were religion and they knew that as jews we are forbidden to 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 usurp the rights of the people there, that we we have to be as the law states and the, the, the decree of exile, that we have to pray and uh, f- and and uh, for the well-being of the country that took us in, and we have to uh, be loyal citizens. That's a requirement of the Torah, and and they they, ha- they had no problem. Yes, we have a different religion. Yes, we have a different concept of the Messiah of Mashiach. But that's neither here nor there. We as we, they do what they believe, what they believe. We believe what we believe. But it's never a threat. So let me, let me, let me ask you this, Rabbi. Let me ask so you this, let Rabbi. Let me finish this. So we therefore okay. they, we have no problem living together in peace because they understood and they know what the Jewish belief is that only through God, in the future, only God Himself will bring an end of exile where there will be a spirit of godliness where all humanity will join. What right. the Zionists come and came and did here is 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 a false, is totally a corrupt concept of Judaism that they're taking guns and saying, give us back the land because God gave it to us. How dare they? It's against God. It's a it's totally the opposite of what Judaism is. And 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 it's and, and that's what created this rift between the Jews and the Muslims, unfortunately, and you know they and and and, and the bloodshed of Palestinians and, and of Jews. So it's terrible. What they, they are the real anti-Semites. They are the exacerbators of anti-Semitism, the Zionists. These are the ones, and the, so they're the ones they, they accuse others of being anti-Semitic when they're with willfully, continually, and in, 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 in a colossal manner, they are exacerbating anti-Semitism. Look what's happening now in in, in Sheikh Jarrah over there in, in Silwan. What are they doing? They're, they're instigating. They're, they're throwing people out of their houses. They're, 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 they're evil uh, in, in, its, in its essence, you know. It's, it's just unbelievable. And yet they have the audacity to speak in the name of Judaism. And, and the leaders of, the, of, of, you know, many states and say, shake their heads, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you are, you, you, you're Jewish and they have, they're anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so looking on the screen here. Yeah. Uh, this is John Hagee. What 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 are your thoughts on John Hagee? You know, it's it's very sad, you know, it's really it hurts us because you find that uh, that Zionism went and in order to be create in order to have support, like I say they they 
they put this on this facade of uh, aura supposedly of holiness of Jewishness and then they go sell that to the Christians and they tell them that we are what it says in the Bible the children of Israel have to return to the land of Israel and unfortunately they do and they fool you know many many of the Christian religion and they, and they, uh, many mean it very well I'm not going to you know I can't judge you know, people and they, uh, but, but we, we give, it's a given that most people are good and they have good hearts. They want to do what's good. And they, and they think that they're supporting the Jewish people. They have sympathy for what we went through Hitler and what we suffered so much. And they say, yes, it's in the Bible, but they don't, they just, they should really with great, with the, with, uh, with respect, we're saying to them, you should really just, why don't you go to your, to the communities where you have the, the very religious communities, where there's the great rabbi scholars, it's right next door to you, and ask them, what do you say to what's, what's going on here? You know, what is your opinion? How come there's not an Israeli flag in Williamsburg? How come these great scholars and the chief rabbi of Palestine, why do they... Why are they so opposed to the state? They, they, they give their lives. They, give, they pay for private schooling. We pray for kosher food. We, do, we give our lives. We live our lives to serve God. And all of a sudden, at this such a great issue of having a state returning out of exile, it could be that's the greatest thing according to Zionism. That's the only thing you have to do to be a Jew. So how come these Jews who are practicing their religion and every 24 hours a day of their life how, uh, how come they oppose the state? Now, if he would just take the time and the effort to ask these great rabbis that we have in our communities, then he may, he, and he may discover that he's been going down the wrong path, unfortunately. So that's what we plead with them. In fact, we go to Washington, D.C. when they make their conference in Washington Conference Center. Uh, we go there and they'd have this big, you know, thousands of people come to their uh, conference for the support of Israel. And we stand outside and we have signs and we beg them year in and year out. We ask people, listen, listen to the Jewish rabbis. They're the ones who are the scholars of their religion, right? So hear what we're saying about the Bible, that this Zionism is not only not Judaism, but it is the, uh, the, the corruption of Judaism and it's scandalous, and it is unethical what the Arabs say. It's a, a catastrophe, you know. I, I want to play. I want to play a quick video. It's it's a, it's a pr fairly short. It's Idi Amin, and Idi Amin is discussing and talking about um, Israel, the state of Israel, and those uh, who uh, were behind the 1948 uh, Balfour Declaration. And I want to just check out some things. Some things that he was saying, and let me know. Do you agree with that? Here we go training in Israel. But I'm trained as a paratrooper in Israel. But I have got a very good brain and even General Dayan knows that. Oh, sorry about that. Training in Israel. But I'm trained as a paratrooper in Israel. But I have got a very good brain and even General Dayan knows that I am very good uh, field officer. You do Dayan very well. I know him and uh, I know him. He has been my friend. He has been he, giving me dinner, lunch, and in his house. If I go to Israel, I used to stay with Diane. He brings Air Force Ben playing for me. We stay together. Sure. But I must make it absolutely truth. The reason why I chased them from Uganda was because of the economy of Uganda. Uganda was going to be bankrupt. That is the reason why I chased away the Israelis. And you said you were friends with Golda Meir. Yes because she used to give me very good entertainment when I go to Israel. Then you change completely from an Israeli alliance to the Arab alliance. I changed from Israeli alliance because Israeli are criminals and that they are not trusted people. They don't tell the world the truth. They were taken to Palestine as refugees and then they changed Palestine to become a state of Israel by force of arms given to them by Americans. What are your, th what are your thoughts on that, Rabbi? Well, again, uh, we will always speak clearly that we're not, <clears throat> we're not going to talk about, um, uh, you, you know, if uh, people where, where there's bloodshed and, um, you know, the, the approach 
to oppose Zionism. Right. So, so we 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 believe as we went through Hitler and we went through so much suffering, but our approach was never that we should take up arms, and it's a whole Jewish concept and so forth. Right. So, but so, but but. The facts that he said is a fact. They are corrupt, and they and 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 they and they took over the Palestinians, and that is a that is a totally true statement. That they, they what they did is criminal. That's what, what he said is totally true. Again, it's, it is my personal. It is my. Per that. You know, it is my personal. It's my. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Rabbi. I'm sorry. I just want to say that what we should do about that. I'm not getting into what would should be done about that. Right. You know, but and I have to be very clear about that. But but in in the essence of the the thing, the the fact of the thing that they've done a, a crime, not a, a, just a small crime, uh, um, uh, a, a really a, a, a horrific crime because they took away the land and so forth, and they killed and they um, stolen and so forth. What they did, you know, they murdered so many, you know, the Palestinians and threw them out of the land. That is a hundred percent right yeah because he's he, he's saying they can't be trusted they don't tell the world the truth and their arms and support of the land and zionism and, and everything it came from the americans and the british and others who were a part of the alliance with that so when i look at that many who are in the christian world and i show john hagee Many of them listen to John Hagee as a means of supporting Zionism because of the fact um, they feel as though scripture tells them, uh, based on what through John Hagee and others, that the state of Israel and Zionism should be supported no matter what. And no matter, basically, almost is saying no matter what they do wrong, they're still writing doing it because this is God's plan. What's your thought on that? My thought is, I mean, these people, if they're talking about because they want to, they because they want to support, uh, um, you know, so so-called, you know, like a Jewish state because they're the children of Israel, the children of God, and so forth. I mean, why don't they just go look what how they're treating <laughs> the Jewish people in their in in their land, how they're viciously. Um, attacking, beating, um, and and maiming the religious community. They're, they're, all the Jewish laws they 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 breach. Uh, they 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 take. They dig up graves. We keep the bo uh, body is considered holy by us. It's the image of God. And they, they for archaeological purposes they dig up graves with impunity. They want to build a hotel. There's a cemetery there. Dig up the whole thing. They want to the the archaeologists want to see the the study the bones. Dig it up. We have to we have our people blood uh, pours from our people because we go out to their cemeteries to protect it from the archaeologists. We we have every time they wanted to build an extension to called Kavush Six, one of the main highways. I see it, it ran right through a Jewish cemetery. So we had to stand there in the, in in the, so the in the shovels of the uh, of, of the, uh, and the holes there that they're digging that they in order to that they to stop them from digging further. I mean they 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 make um, autopsies for the, to study the body and so forth. When a person dies, God forbid, we have to we have to send uh, uh, people to the hospital twenty four hours to watch that body because we come back later. It's cut up when because wow. for, for their purpose they have this is an ongoing thing. They should go. We'll see, they, like I said, he's talking about a Jewish state. Well, just look what's happening there. Look at the Sabbath. It says on the you have to rest on the day of Sabbath. They have no such issue of Sabbath. I mean, the Ten Commandments. That's pretty pretty open for everybody to see. Everybody knows the Ten Commandments. And so, why doesn't these guys who are religious Christian leaders? Why don't they take a look and see what this is a Jewish state? And 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 at least if they would say, okay, maybe I don't know what Judaism is, but there's so many thousands and thousands of rabbis. And the the uh, this the the God fearing communities over there, and we have of um uh, in the United States we have um the, the, they can go and ask them. We stand there and demonstrate every year in front of their convention. They know about it. Why don't they listen to the voice and have respect for the Jewish people who are who are begging? And pleading with the world and saying to the Christian leadership, have pity on us, have pity on them. you want to help Jewish people. So why don't you have pity on the Jewish community that was living there for hundreds of years and the, and the refugees that came out of the, of the, of, of the uh, gas chambers from Europe? Why don't you have pity on these Jews? We are being we are being oppressed. We are being uh, uh, um, uh, murdered and, 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 and 
maimed and arrested because we're religious Jews. So if you really want to help Judaism, I mean, I'm not saying that they don't mean well, but they're really, really playing into the hands of the devil. <laughs> and let me just tell you something. This is just the last, this now, now, a few weeks ago, the chief rabbi of Palestine, uh, you know, with the with the terrible things that's happening in this last month, month the settlers that they're attacking, and um, and 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 they're attacking in uh, in Al Quds and they, you know in the old city and uh, and in the um, so the so the chief rabbi of Palestine put out a, a, a letter in Arabic and in English and um, um and in, in the old Hebrew, not the Zionist Hebrew, because they even made another language because they detest <laughs> God's language, so they made something called the Brit. They have a new language. Why did they change the language of God? They instead of using the old Hebrew, the holy, what's called Loshon Kodesh. Oh, wait, 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 hold on, 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 Rabbi. I gotta stop you right there. Did you just say Loshon Kodesh? That's what Hebrew is called. In the oh, Bible. man, Rabbi. Loshon Kodesh it means the holy language. And they changed, they made a grit. <laughs> they have an Ivrit. Modern Hebrew, they call it Ivrit. Why did they make a new language? Because they detest God and the religion. They walk wow. away from that. That's a fact. That's not a, 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 a ask them. Why did they have to the, have a language? We have books, thousands and thousands of books on the language and every um, um, uh, uh, every letter and every um, uh, nuanced uh, difference in the language and how it works. It's the holy language given to us by God. Yet they went and they decided to make a new language. And by the way, the, uh, his name was Yehuda. Um, he, uh, uh, he wrote the language and he, he died with his pen in his hand on the Sabbath. We're not allowed to write on the Sabbath. <laughs> they went in, they found them dead. He had the pen in his hand on the Sabbath. These are this is what we're dealing with. You know, you know, Rabbi, it's interesting. I'm laughing because um I'm laughing at the fact of, of what you're saying, but also it's interesting because many Christians, and I know you asked me when we were talking on the phone, you were asking me about uh, you know, the limbers and, and things like all do we have we experienced any type of uh, pushback, persecution, and things like that. And um, that's one of the conversations here in America that many Christians um, are against. They believe, and, and many of the sect of Christians that we deal with, that we've come in contact with, that have come against us, um, is that the Lashawan Kodesh language, they believe that it's made up <laughs> and that it's not true. So I don't know where, maybe they're getting that from the Zionists. I guess this may be uh, what it is. And, and, and the reason why when you stated that they changed it from that and made up their own, you know, Hebrew or whatnot. It's called modern Hebrew. <laughs> you know, they call it modern Hebrew because it's something modern. They just created Ivrit, they call it. And it, but we uh, have used Russian codes. We pray and we've refused to speak modern Hebrew because it's 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 uh, it, it, it's uh, repulsive. It's uh, you know, it's just a, a crime. I mean, you know, we have. I like to hear. Yeah, this is by the way. We when they made the Palestinian Authority, we were we had a representative in the Palestinian Authority, and 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 this is a picture of him together with uh, President Arafat. Um, and and he, mind you, he lived in this in Jerusalem. He was a, a scholar, a, a very special person. They and the Zionists poured acid in his face, and they made, blinded him in one eye. He was barely able to see from the other. This is just part of a another, uh, you know, thing to see about what's how the Zionists treat the religious, uh, the religious Jews, the religious community there. Uh, right. We've then been demonstrating till, till uh -huh. now. I mean, constantly these weeks, these days, we are, the, our, my brothers and sisters there are demonstrating in the streets of um, of Jerusalem against what the Zionists are doing. It's unacceptable. We cry and suffer, and we are humiliated because, like I said, we have to show gratitude for the Arab and Muslim people. And they took us in the Ottoman the Empire. Yeah, they, they took us in the um, um in into um, all their countries and into Palestine. It was under. Um, it was on the Turkey, and they they took us. We we have to show gratitude, and yet what are the Zionists doing? They're oppressing them. They're throwing them out and calling them the the, the villains, and then and the Zionists are the victims. It's just the opposite. So we are we hurt, we cry, we suffer, and we are humiliated by what's being done in our name. And we therefore we try as many times we can. We try to go out in the streets to the United Nations, and we go out around the world and demonstrate with the Palestinian people. And we even went to, with God's help, we went to Gaza. Uh, we went to, uh, um, uh, you know, to Lebanon. Uh, you can see we have on our site many pictures of our demonstrations and how we stood together. Here you see pictures 
Well, this is with President Arafat, but we went to many countries. Here you can see just recently, you know, we don't get involved in any political issues. We try to just let the world know that it's not a religious conflict. So here you see a picture of us in Gaza with uh, Ismail Khania. And here you see together with uh, President Abbas, we don't, like I say, we don't get, we're not getting into the different political issues. We want the world to see that they all embrace us and they all state one thing. They have nothing against Judaism or the Jewish people. Their conflict is with Zionism and with the state of Israel. Nothing to do with their conflict against Jews. Now, Rabbi, let me ask you, this, this guy that you see on the screen here, are you familiar with him? Oh, I know him very well. Okay. In the Western world, it's taught that he shouldn't be trusted. He's the biggest enemy against Israel and all this. What is your perspective? Because you know him very well. Is Are those statements true? Okay, yeah. Now, I'll have to uh, retract. I shouldn't have. I mean, it's, uh, I spoke too broad to say I know him very well. I met him many times. And, okay. he, and we sat with him for hours and hours already. And he's very friendly. And he was the president, of course, of uh, in Iran, President Ahmadinejad. In he, he, he even, in fact, there's a, a newspaper like a, uh, basically a non-religious uh, Jewish, so-called Jewish newspaper called The Forward. And uh, you can Google it. A couple of years ago, they had a front page article on him. And, um, and they said, it's very interesting. He's, uh, you know, they call him this great anti-Semite and um, whatever they call him. And yet they, they write themselves, it's very interesting. He gives charity to the Jewish community, you know, and they have a Jewish community where they have synagogues and they, and, and, and they, they study, they learn, they have, they, they, in Iran, they, they allow the Jewish people, you know, like that they can, that they have Jewish schools, they can practice their religion freely. They have a synagogues that everybody can see the Jewish, so nobody tax it, or God forbid. And and he he was the president for many years, and he respected this. And the Zionists attacked him, so that's what they forward in the front. They said it's, they can't understand this. He gives charity to the Jews, and yet he's such an anti-Semite because he wasn't an anti-Semite. He was clearly he kept on saying, "I have nothing against the Jews." On the contrary, he respected us. He used to, he respects the Jew, Judaism, the religion. He respects the Jewish people, and 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 he and he lo loves the Jewish people. He kept on repeating this. We met him for hours and hours. But he said one thing is that he doesn't accept in any manner, shape or form the occupation of Palestine or what the Zionists are doing. He grew up in, in Iran. Iran, the supreme leader, he was called the Ayatollah Khomeini, at, right at the beginning said, I have nothing against Judaism. There's many quotes of him. There's big signs there. He said, my issue is with Zionism. That is what why the Zionists hate Iran, and that's why they find it to be such a uh, um, uh, an, uh, 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 an enemy that they call what they call you know the uh, Austin that they're afraid of because Zion, because the Iran undermines their legitimacy. They say what we say. They say clearly we have nothing against Jews. The, the Zionists, in order to get support and get sympathy, is because they run around the world saying, oh, the Arabs and the Muslims want to kill us. Kill us. They hate the Jews. They hate the Jews. And they keep on saying that. And nobody says, wait a second. What about the history? How Jews lived together with the, with the, you, with the Jews? What happened? What changed here? And be, nobody starts questioning them that how come till you came, the advent of Zionism, everything was fine and dandy with Jews and Muslims. You all of a sudden came, create a state, and all of a sudden there's this terrible rift and all the suffering. Maybe it's not Judaism. Maybe it's because you have this uh, a selfish, unacceptable occupation. Maybe that's what the problem is. Nobody questions that. But Iran says we do question that. We want, we want to say clearly we have nothing against Jews. Jews lived here for thousands of years in Iran. And they say, and there's no problem. Yet you come along and you occupy people in the name of religion. No, we know it's not a religion. It's not Judaism. It's Zionism. It's the state of Israel. So their opposition, they keep on calling it. They refer to it constantly, by the way, as the Zionist state. They don't even say Israel. They call it the Zionist state usually when they speak about it. So their issue is with Zionism in the state of Israel. President Ahmadinejad didn't pull any punches. He spoke very clearly, constantly. He said, I 
love the Jews. He came, we met, when he used to come to the, uh, New York every year. And because, um, you know, in September, the presidents of around the world come to the United Nations. And we would meet with him for hours. The delegations of rabbis would go and we would meet with him. And he always was respectful. He didn't have a minute of time because he was here very professional. He would always see to give an audience to the rabbis and spend an hour, two hours with us and, 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 to, and constantly repeating that he, he respects, he's a godly, he's a person who's a religious leader. He respects godliness, he respects Judaism and, as, and so forth and so on. And this is recorded. And, but I want to tell you that the Zionist and, and even I think it was uh, CNN, has like if you Google it, they wrote like a, uh, uh, like uh, they were there by one of our meetings, and they had um, you know with their with their uh, with their criminal ways. What they did was they took in, in, what they they took out. We have, we're giving him the blessing for, for that he should be successful and God should protect him and so forth. And and they, and, and they preface this with what they say that he's an anti-Semite and everything, and that we're coming and we're trying to support. So it looks like they're saying, oh, we're supporting him in his anti-Semitism. You know, that's the way they pushed it together. Although they were there for over an hour with their cameras. <laughs> I believe it was CNN. I, I'm, I'm almost a thousand percent sure, but I won't swear to it. It could be another one of the, you know, um, the major um, the media outlets here. And, and that's what they did. That's what they tried to do, you know, but it's not true. He never spoke against Judaism. They quoted him, said that he's, that he's going to kill the Jews or kill or destroy Israel. He's never said that. We Googled, we checked. He never said it. In fact, um, it's, a, it's a very famous quote that they say he said, that he's going to destroy Israel. That is, and and um, and Juan Cole from uh, University of Michigan and uh, and, and and the other uh, um, Jonathan uh, Steele, I think his name is from the Lon London Times or something. They both uh, did a, 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 they, they they did their investigation. They said he simply they falsely translated his words. He never said that. He said, God, he tapped up telling you, he said, God doesn't accept cr crime and God will stop it. God, maybe he said, destroy it. God will destroy it. If he said that, I don't remember exactly, but he never said that he's going to go and destroy. They simply misquoted him maliciously, mind you. So that's what Zionism is. Yeah. They're corrupt. They're liars. They're, 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 if you don't have God as your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, you know, to, th that you fear and, and follow the Torah, then you can do anything, anything to reach your goal. They're ready to sacrifice lives on, on their altar of Zionism simply to reach their goal of having their national home. So it doesn't matter if they're killing Arabs or they're killing Jews, which they do. That's a fact. Wow. Rabbi, thank you for coming on. Um, I really appreciate you. Any any last words, any information you want to give out as far as I know the website dealing with anti anti Zionism and things like that. Um, you want to share that before we let you go? Yeah, with God's help. Um, first of all, Facebook closed us down. YouTube also gave us problems. They closed us, but just like, two weeks ago, or something because we write anti Zionist. Now, th th and that's a, that's a real. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, un it's 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 a tragedy and it's outrageous because. Not only are they not are they um, legitimizing the state, but how do they dare take the Jewish people that are that, that were there first, and and that we are suffering under the hands, and they don't give us the 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 the, uh, the ability to be able to say our words and to say that we're being beaten. We're never violent. We never carry guns. Nobody accuses us of being violent. Yet they close us down because we're anti-Zionist. It's unacceptable, and we plead with anybody who can help us to do something about this. That it should be turned, that should be changed. But anyway, we we urge everybody: do not call refer to as a Jewish state or the Jews because you're playing into the hands of the Zionists that they could attack you as anti-Semitic. We plead with the Jews, and we, we plead with the Christians: look, step back, look that the very religious Jews our great rabbis, our saints that they're living here, you can see it, they're all opposed to it. Why? Uh, if you're looking for the truth, then study the issue properly, and you will have to come to the conclusion that Zionism and their state is unacceptable, and because we are Jews, we should oppose it. And we want to apologize to the Palestinian people and to the, with the refugees where they're under all the refugee camps where they're suffering so much. We cry with you, we feel with you, we actually went to visit some of the refugee camps. Let them 
let them, let, they should hear our voice that we're standing together and we urge everybody to pray to God because ultimately we have to do. And, nobody, and we urge everybody, don't be intimidated what they're attacking you because God is, asks for us, from us, that we should stand up. It may look like it's futile, but we have to stand up for what's righteous. We have to stand up for the suffering of the Palestinian people and so forth. We went to Gaza. We visited their, their homes. We brought medical aid. We brought them um, uh, uh, ambulance. What, you have to stand up for this. And don't be fearful because you can always refer to us as, uh, as, as the, to show that you're not anti-Semitic. At the same time, we urge everybody to pray for the uh, total peaceful and speedy removal of this impediment to peace the, 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 in its entirety, the Zionist state of Israel. God should help. It says in the Torah, why are you rebelling against me? It will not be successful. The state will end. We are certain of this, but we don't know when. We urge everybody to pray to God with his compassion. We will do, we'll speak out. We'll urge our leaders, the heads of, the, of, of countries to, to, to change their policies and God with his compassion in his manner, however he'll do it, that he should bring a speedy and peaceful end of the occupation with the free Palestine so we can embrace them and say, here's back your homes, here's your dignity, here's your life. And God help, the day will come when all humanity will recognize the one God and serve him in harmony soon in our days. Amen. And assalamu alaikum to the Arab followers. Amen. All right. Shalom to you, uh, Rabbi. I hope you have a, a wonderful day. Definitely uh, appreciate you uh, and everything that you shared. And uh, I, I agree. I'm not, you know, I'm not for the, the Zionism, not for the, the, the Balfour Declaration, I'm not for any of that. And I thank you for sharing your perspective. This is the first time, again, that um, I've had a rabbi that I even know um, that is anti-Zionism or speak against it. I know uh, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg, and I know me, you talked, you said you didn't know him, you weren't familiar with him. Um, you're not familiar with too many uh, rabbis that actually live in the land. But at the same time, he is not, he's anti-Zionist uh, as well. And so there's a agreement there. So um, I agree with you. And I, I thank you for coming on once again and uh, have a wonderful day.